much. This has been an incredible journey, almost 30 years. Uh, we will be 30 years in 19, not 19, we were founded in 1988, so 2018. VJ was a founding board member as well as uh, his church, uh, Dr. Now, uh, Reverend John Burns, who was the associate pastor here. This was his idea. He did something close to this in Louisiana and Kansas and convinced the ministerium that instead of people going church to church asking for money or asking for help, come to a centralized place where you can get food, where you can get a social worker, where you can get, and so this is our first step was lunch. <clears throat> the church has stepped up and offered their space. Then we, the county gave us space in the parking garage where we still are over on Woodmont. And we do social services. We have outreach workers, we have clinical social workers, we have a psychiatrist on staff to keep people to engage them and bring them in and to get them housing. We're a housing focused outreach. It's not enough to feed people every day. If you don't end their homelessness, then that's a bigger sin in my book. And since then we've added a critical time intervention specialist. As we house people, we realized if you've lived on the street for 30 some <laughs> years, adjusting to living in a roof, using a microwave, grocery shopping, that's that. It, that day-to-day -day focus of survival all of a sudden stretches out. So we have a social worker, and that's all he does. The first couple of weeks somebody's in, he's there every day, helping them set up doctor appointments, hooking them up with resources like Metro Access so they can get places, showing them how to take the buses from their new place, wherever they're living. And all of this is the wraparound service to move people from the streets into housing. We also have an eviction prevention program to keep people from becoming homeless in the first place, and we assist countywide. The lunch program was our first and it's the most integral part of what we do, because as you were talking this morning about communion and community, and <coughs> how do you form, it's over a meal. People that are in isolation set it up purposely that they sit at long tables so that they will have a chance, or maybe force them to acknowledge their neighbor, speak to their neighbor, the social skills that we take for granted are lost. It's a completely 180 from what you need to survive on the street. I don't make eye contact, but you might beat me up, so I walk like this. At lunch, we say, look at each other and talk, so that when you do do that job interview or go talk to the landlord, you can present that you are willing to make that connection with people. And it's been a wonderful, amazing journey along the way. The community has supported this church. We've had community service day where they painted the dining room. We had an Eagle Scout project that cleaned and spruced up the kitchen maybe eight years ago. And now uh, the county stepped in because they've gotten rid of all the laws that exempt soup kitchens. Mm -hmm. We're no longer cute and pretty. We have to have the same code as the restaurants, which is a big leap up from, oh, yeah. from serving. So the big box in there is a grease trap because the SSC wants all the grease trapped here. And we're here and we're ready and we're rolling and it's a wonderful and it's all because of your support. And your vision and your caring in the community, which is just phenomenal. And Mr. Rowlett here has been the dean and the one that you know has our heart. Well, she's spoken it all. I just would like to have one thing. Starting this program was not easy. And John Burns, as she mentioned, came up here with this idea and and you got a lot of churches involved, but nobody wanted to house the homeless people for lunch or anything else. On top of that, several of these communities around us <laughs> you live in Edgeport, you know. the restaurants <laughs> fought it, the neighborhood fought it. I mean, it took a lot to overcome for this to be a come to fruition that it is. So, I, I, yeah, I am kind of proud. You should be. And now... <laughs> over and serves lunch once a month. So, you know, that things change for the better. All who, of it. Who does? Edgemore community. Oh, the Edgemore community. They fought they, us. They like. Yeah, they fought us, as BJ said, they ranged for phone calls to John Burns every 15 minutes around the clock. Oh. Mm -hmm. hey, thank you, sir. I want to ha hear from uh, Sully, who was the man who helped get that $40,000 grant. Without his help, I don't think it would have happened. And he also helped oversee all this renovation. So let's give a hand to yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
no reason to keep us uh, much longer. One thing that does occur to me, though, in listening to Sue, uh, how God works in some different ways, uh, and what se doesn't seem like a blessing at first. We were having these county health inspectors, WSSC inspectors, said, don't even look at them, close the door, we don't want to talk to these people. Well, they forced us into this and what has turned into be a real blessing. Mm -hmm. So in fact, although the regulations have changed, we now have new sinks, this grease trap, uh, great new appliances, we've been able to put in new power, thanks to the county grant, we've, we've cleaned up the, uh, the men's bathroom there, this is all new flooring, uh, it's really great. And I would add one sort of personal note here, the principal clientele that comes in, they are folks who are on the street, they are homeless. But there are some other groups that come in, and there's one group that comes in, I think it's on Fridays, uh, and there are several people with disabilities, including Down syndrome. Uh, my sister, who passed away a couple of years ago, in the early 60s, uh, had Down syndrome, and so I just have a soft spot for that community, and I've come down and had lunch a couple of times. We've so it's a time. few different communities that come in, and and take advantage of this kitchen, which now is going to last us for many more years. Actually, there are volunteers. Yes, and they're volunteers. Yes, they're, and they're they, volunteers. Come, they come in and volunteer and yep. set up. Right. So, thank, great occasion. Thank you, Sarah. Let me get a picture of Gary Sally. Hey, Gary. I hope they're in Gary, sharp. excuse me. They need to be able to get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, if you hold it up like they're getting ready to, keep them in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look at you, or look at the ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And she's coming from the other side. There's, oh, Sue's got you over there. Sue in front of you, BJ. Right. Right <laughs> Go ahead and cut it, BJ. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I can. Oh, you You're just about there. Not tight enough. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thank you. Before you go in, we'll have one other thing. You have put so much into this program for 14 years, and we appreciate it so much. Sully's, at Sully's suggestion, and everyone's unanimous agreement, we have this name, this kitchen for you. And if I may read it. B.J. Rowlett served as coordinator of Bethesda Carriage Lunch Program for 14 years, from 1988 to 2002 and served as a member of the Bethesda Care Board for more than 10 years. The church in Bethesda honors BJ as an inspirational servant of Christ. BJ and Connie were pillars of the Bethesda First Baptist Church for 30 years. Okay, BJ's Kitchen. Amen. Feel free to run.